We're going to draw a generalized alternation of generations life cycle. And this is something that all land plants are going to do. All land plants are going to do an alternation of generations life cycle. And when I say generalized, I mean that we're going to draw one that you could find in any land plant. The parts that we're going to draw would exist in everything from a fern to a moss to an oak tree to a pine tree. They're all going to have at least these parts. And to get us started when we draw a life cycle, we got to remember that this line is here for a reason. The line is there to separate the haploid generation from the diploid generation. And since it's a cycle, meaning it goes around in a circle, we could potentially say that top is haploid or bottom is haploid or either way around. It's a circle. It's always going to work. Whenever I do them, I typically always put my haploid generation on top. So I'm going to say this is 2n. And I put my diploid generation on the bottom. So I'm going to say this is 2n. I'm sorry, I might have just said n. This is haploid. This is diploid. So you got to label that to get yourself started. You got to say which is haploid, which is diploid. Since it's an alternation of generations life cycle, meaning that we have two generations, the next thing I draw are my generations. And my generations are the multicellular stages of the life cycle. And so if this was a pine tree, it would look like a pine tree. If I was going to do the life cycle of a fern, that I would need to draw a fern. But since I'm just kind of doing this generalized life cycle that any of them could fit in, I'm going to do a checkerboard. And the checkerboard just indicates that this is multicellular and this is multicellular. Since this one is haploid and multicellular, this is the gametophyte. And since this one is diploid and multicellular, this one is the sporophyte. So I'm going to use that just to get me started. The next step is to draw all the things that they're going to make and what they're going to become. So I'm going to start with the gametophyte. You could start anywhere because, again, it's a circle. But I'm going to start with the gametophyte. And gametophyte is called the gametophyte because it makes gametes. Sporophyte is a sporophyte because it makes spores. So when I start with my gametophyte, the thing that it's going to produce next is it is going to make gametes. And those gametes are going to be found within specialized structures. So the female gametangia is the archegonium. And so the gametophyte is going to start to grow archegonia. And depending on the species, this might be one archegonia. This could be lots of archegonia. But this is an archegonia. And inside of my archegonia is going to be a single egg cell. There's also going to be antheridia, and antheridia are going to be packed really, really densely with sperm. So I've got antheridia on the gametophyte that are making sperm. I've got archegonia on the gametophyte that has an egg. The sperm are now going to travel over to the egg. If this was a pine tree, that's going to happen with something like pollen. If this was a bryophyte or a fern, this is going to happen when the sperm just swim from the antheridia over to the archegonia. But in either case, they're going to meet, and we are going to have a fertilization event. So we're going to have fertilization right here. Somehow those two gametes are going to find one another. And once we have a fertilized egg we're going to have a zygote. So I'm going to put a Z to indicate zygote. And that zygote is still only one cell, but the difference is that now that it's become fertilized, it is now diploid. The next step is for the zygote to start to divide and grow up. And so we're going to go from a zygote to an embryo, meaning that it has more than one cell, but it isn't the complete full-grown organism yet. And then that embryo is going to become the sporophyte. Remember that all of the divisions from here to here, those are all going to happen with mitosis. And the reason it's going to be mitosis is because we're not changing ploidy. We're going from a diploid cell to a bunch of diploid cells to even more diploid cells, but there's never a change in ploidy, so this is all going to be mitosis. Same thing over here. The gametophyte is haploid, so when it makes the egg and the sperm, the egg and the sperm are also haploid, so again, there's no change in ploidy, so this is all just mitosis. 
We do have a change in ploidy when we go from the gametes over to the zygote, and that's indicated when we say that there's a fertilization event. So our sporophyte is now going to make spores. Sporophytes make spores. And this part is always difficult for a lot of people to understand because the sporophyte is diploid, the gametophyte is haploid, and when we think of ourselves, we are diploid, and when we go through meiosis, we make gametes. Well, remember, this is a plant. They don't have the same life cycle as us. And so in plants, the sporophyte is going to make a sporangium, which, depending on the organism, might look a bunch of different ways. But we're going to make a sporangium. And the sporangium itself is 2N. So the structure, the sporangial structure, is diploid. And inside of it, is where we're gonna find our spores. But our spores are haploid. And so the way that we're going to get a haploid cell from a diploid cell is through meiosis. So when we make the sporangium, that's just regular old mitosis because we're making a structure from diploid tissue that was already there. But when we make the actual spores, and I'm gonna draw four of them just to remind us that this is not a mitotic division, this is gonna be a meiotic division. This is meiosis. And so we're gonna go through meiosis to generate spores. The spores are gonna be released from the sporangium and they are gonna germinate to go back and produce our gametophyte. And the larger life cycle is complete. So whether we're talking about, again, a pine tree, a flowering plant, a moss, a, uh, a, a fern, they're all going to have this life cycle because this is going to be true for all land plants. And the events that you can use to kind of like orient yourself within this thing are to make sure that you have a multicellular haploid gametophyte, a multicellular diploid sporophyte, that when you go from having haploid tissue over to diploid tissue, that is through a fertilization event. And then when you have your diploid tissue become haploid, that is through a meiotic division. One thing that people get confused with, you got to try to remember early on, is that both gametes and spores are haploid. They kind of sort of seem like they might have some similarities. They are unicellular and stuff like that, but they aren't the same thing. And their ploidy level is not opposite. People tend to think, oh, well, if gametes are haploid, then spores must be diploid. But that's not true. Spores are produced from diploid tissue, but the spores themselves are haploid.